In this video, we are going to take a look at the future in Gandhi Malu Mamel. Now, Gandhi and Khalees Fisher are the first two verbal commits to UConn in the 25-26 season. Now, Gandhi's story, if you don't know, is very interesting as she's actually from Limerick, Ireland. And essentially, she is very, very raw and... We will go into this. As Gino says, you know, in, in the video, I am supposed to tell you, this is the greatest recruit of all time, and this will transform UConn's program because it'll be the greatest player they've ever had. We haven't asked you about your uh, two new signees yet, so uh, Morgan and Allen, what do you think about them? And then just what was your goal? Two best players I've ever recruited in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what everybody says <laughs> when kids sign? You know? The two best players I've ever signed in my life. Those kids are going to transform our program. And uh, uh, and then reality sets when they when they get here. So it's best to tell the truth. So at this stage, I cannot tell you if Gandhi is going to be Hakeem Olajuwon or if she will be Tito Horford. I am not sure. By the way, did you know Hakeem Olajuwon actually was supposed to visit five schools, and the first school was St. John's in New York. However, when he got outside the airport, it seemed too frantic and too damn cold, so he decided to cancel his visit to St. John's and went to Houston three days earlier. Guy V. Lewis, the coach, had been told before about prospects coming and assumed that Olajuwon was not 6'10", but 6'5", and when he got the call from Olajuwon that he was three days early, he told him to take a taxi. Now the story goes, Guy V. Lewis was delighted when Olajuwon got out of the taxi and was 6'10", and Olajuwon loved Houston because it reminded him of Lagos, Nigeria, in terms of the hot weather. So he canceled the rest of his scheduled visits and committed to Houston, and the rest is history. Now, in terms of Gandhi, she was discovered by Kieran Quinn, who was a pro basketball player. His wife played basketball as well, and he used to play for the Irish national team, and he did some consultancy work helping Irish players come to America and play basketball. So the story goes that he was looking at film. He was asked to take a look at another player. And while watching the film, he saw Gandhi and she just exploded on the film. In his mind, he saw her and it's like, who is this? She runs the floor so well, so quick. I need to find out more about this girl. Now, as the story goes, told by Dan Conley, he had her send over some tapes of her working out because it was in the height of COVID. And basically, she was a hot mess in terms of skills and development, but knew that she was a great prospect and needed to have a chance. Now, Gandhi did not start playing basketball until she was 12. Like, they had a demonstration at her school, and then she joined a club, and she got more serious at the age of 15, but again, Ireland is not the hotbed of basketball. I mean, they play, but it's not the number one sport. After the travel restrictions eased, Quinn saw her in person and, again, very impressed with her. 6'5", could move, and just saw all the tools there, but knew that she had to come to America to get her talent developed and just be immersed in basketball. Now, this is where it sort of gets wild. Now, Quinn is married and his wife played collegiate ball and he had three kids, a 16-year-old daughter, a 14-year-old son, and another eight-year-old daughter. And he had to convince them, hey, we're going to bring home this kid and take her in and train her up. And he had a serious talk with Gandhi saying, hey, this is no joke. It's not going to be fun. It's a lot of work. You know, you're going to have some bad days if you come with me. And her parents were supportive, so her parents were actually, they immigrated to Ireland from the Congo, so they knew this was her big opportunity and were supportive. And she made the move, and it, in the other story I read, it, it was not all smooth sailing. He sort of alludes to, you know, iron sharpens iron, and there were, you know, you know, because a 16-year-old daughter, and all of a sudden you're going to share your time with with the another girl from Ireland it, you know you can imagine the difficulties and tension that might cause in a family but it all seemed to work out 
and she has developed her game and gotten better and better. Quinn would essentially have her train against her, his daughter and his son each night as well. She would practice with the team they had. I, I saw some film of this, which I'll, which I'll put in the video of her sort of, you can see how she's raw and stuff and getting coaching from them and slowly developing. Her game gradually improved. She was on an EYBL team. And the coach, Patty Coyle, played with Chris Daly. And she asked her to take a look at Gandhi. Chris Daly was impressed. Gandhi said before the game she knew that Daly and UConn would be watching her. And she played, like, really well. She really focused. And from there, interest grew. And then UConn gave her a scholarship offer, which she has accepted. Now, Gandhi is not a top 100 prospect. She This is a, a scholarship based on potential. She's 6'5". She has good feet. She can run the court well. And the hope is, is that her skills will develop. Now, watching this training session from 2022... You can see she really can't sort of make moves on anybody. She is just very, very raw, appears to have good hands, um, not real aggressive. I saw a clip, like a jersey clip of her high school game, like uh, her highlights, and it was basically just catch and lay up, and that's essentially what she's able to do right now. So she can get a dish, like a bounce pass, and put it straight back in, to a layup but really cannot face up and make a move on anybody and, and does not really have any post moves. And that is why I sort of came with the initial Akeem Olajuwon story because that's what you're hoping for here is that she's just raw clay that needs to be molded and with UConn and the current coaching she gets, she still has another year of high school left and over that time, in theory, she should just get better and better and, you know, at some point be able to help UConn be strong inside. That would be the hope. Now, I mentioned Tito Horford. That was the recruit after Olajuwon that everybody was fighting themselves over. We have to get Tito Horford. He is the next Olajuwon. I think Houston got in trouble trying to recruit him, and he wound up going to LSU. And Tito Horford he was no Akeem Olajuwon and just did not have the instincts for basketball. He looked good in the airport, but he could not play, unfortunately. And really, time will tell over the long haul how Gandhi will go and develop. But she is already a winner in a lot of ways. She wanted to get out of Ireland and do something different. She had a dream to play basketball in America from around the age of 12. She was hoping for a way out, something to do something bigger. Her parents were supportive, and she's come to America in less than a year and has been able to score a scholarship to the, one of the most prestigious basketball schools in the country. So even if she does not turn into Akeem Olajuwon or Aaliyah Boston, she is already a winner. It seems pretty clear that UConn loves international kids just a lot of ways due to their, their work ethic and as well how they're usually focused on trying to be professionals. And Gandhi's no different as she's focused on trying to make it to the WNBA. And hopefully she can be the next Dorca or Lou Lopez Seneschal. And my real hope is, is that the UConn coaching staff gives her time to develop as she is very, very raw and will need time and some seasoning. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Good night.